were a freshman in high school, did they give you a senior buddy? When I was a freshman, they gave us senior buddies. Each freshman would be paired with a fourth year student who would guide them, answer questions, show them the ropes, you know, and basically get the freshman over, you know, get him in, make sure he's not left out. I personally, I loved my senior buddy because I got the icon, I got the big man on campus. You had all these hot girls going up to him, inviting him over, it was awesome. That guy taught and showed me so much, both school and non-school related. JJ Body hated his senior buddy because his senior buddy he, that he got was an asshole. He like picked on him, sent ugly girls to go kiss him. My point is this. The point is, is that this seems to be what TNA seems to be trying to do. They seem to be taking these young guys, these not as over guys, and pairing them up with senior buddies, these established veterans. And this is a great idea. The issue with this though is that some of the pairings they've made are not very good. AJ Styles looks ridiculous trying to be the nature boy. He's clearly better as a babyface. Let's take a look at some of these pairings. Here seem to be some of TNA's senior buddy pairings. Abyss is with Hogan, AJ's with Flair, Eric Young was with Kevin Nash, but is now aligned with Jeff Hardy and RVD against Kevin Nash, and Mr. Anderson's feuding with Kurt Angle. Now, some of these pairings seem to be off. First of all, the Monster Abyss does not make any sense being with the All-American Hulk Hogan. Likewise, AJ Styles does not make a good heel. He does not make a good nature boy. AJ works best as one of those likable, all-American baby faces. You see what I'm getting at? AJ Styles is better off with Hulk Hogan! Yeah! Look how good this looks! A heck of a lot better than AJ in a fluffy Ric Flair robe! Now, if AJ is paired with Hulk Hogan, then who should be with Ric Flair? Who would team with the kiss-stealing son of a gun? Is there currently an arrogant heel on the roster trying to impress his woman? Now that's what I'm talking about! Look how much more sense this makes! Look how much better things can be with a more proper alignment of baby faces and heels! So we got AJ with Hogan and Wolf with Flair. So who should be with Abyss? Well, someone that makes sense. Someone that can complement his hardcore nature. This is almost like making Survivor Series teams. It's better when it makes sense. So what can I say about Jack Swagger? I can say that this post-attitude era has yielded some of the weakest WWE champions of all time. Gone are the days of guys like Hogan, Savage, Flair, Bret, Rock, and Austin proudly carrying the belts. Now we have guys like JBL, Kali, Sheamus, Jack Swagger, and I'll even include two guys I like, Jeff Hardy and RVD, because even though I like them, their title reigns seem so passing that you don't really associate them with the belts. You know, it's more like, oh yeah, he was world champion, wasn't he? Like that, you know, you don't automatically picture him with the belt like you do Bret Hart. And that's the promotion's fault. So, JBL, Kali, Sheamus, Swagger, Hardy, RVD, some of the weakest world champions of all time, all in this post-attitude era, you know, what are they doing? They really need to go back to just having one properly built world champion. The WWE seems to have things all back asswards. You don't throw the world title on a newbie to make him a star. You build the newbie into a star to make him worthy of the world title. Because if you just throw the belt on a newbie, it's just a nobody as world champion, a Rocky Maivia as world champion, a ringmaster Steve Austin as world champion. If they made Austin world champion while he was still the ringmaster, then we probably would have never gotten stone cold. A proper champion is built through time. For those of you who still don't seem to get it, let's compare Jack Swagger's push with a proper push. Let's start with Jack Swagger. Jack Swagger debuted in ECW in September of 08. Within four months, he's already ECW champion. He then goes to Raw's larger audience in June of 09 and would follow with completely craptacular appearances at the big pay-per-views. He loses at SummerSlam, is one of only two guys eliminated from his team at the Survivor Series, and lasts only two minutes at the Royal Rumble. Two minutes! So he's a nobody, right? Well, guess what? He's world champion! Ten months after debuting on Raw. How are we supposed to buy this? How are we as fans supposed to connect with this? Now let's look at Steve Austin. Austin made his Raw debut in late 1995. 
he would follow this with wins at the big pay-per-views. After lasting 11 minutes at the Royal Rumble, Austin would win his WrestleMania match. He would then win the King of the Ring tournament and give his now legendary speech, then win again at SummerSlam. This, ladies and gentlemen, is what we call build up. Austin Mania at this point was gaining steam. Signs were showing up at the crowds and people were starting to chant his name. But does this mean he's ready to be world champion? No! Ten months after his Raw debut, in the time it took Swagger to become world champion, Austin was still feuding with Hunter Hearst Helmsley in the mid-card. Though Austin would get some title shots in early 97, he would not touch a tag title until May. This here is approximately the same amount of time. In about the time it took Austin to get a tag title, Swagger is already world champion after being ECW champion. That's nonsense. What you see on the right side of the screen, as far as I'm concerned, is bullshit. On the other hand, what you see on the left side of the screen to me is a proper push. A slow and steady buildup that added depth to the character and allowed for fans to connect with Austin and his journey. His steady rise through the ranks and initial inability to win a world title only increased emotion and the anticipation for when he would finally break through, such that when he did, over two years after his debut, it felt momentous, climactic, and was the start of a new wrestling era. This is how you do it. This is not how you do it. Which, in my opinion, is why this wrestler at WrestleMania 14 resonates so much more than this guy. Hey Austin, in about the time it took you to get a tag belt, that swagger guy is already two-time champion. In my opinion, pretty much the same point can be made with comparisons to Bret Hart, Shawn Michaels, Randy Savage, The Rock, and to a lesser extent Nash and Warrior. Though these two had a faster road to the world title, they still solidified themselves in the IC title ranks. Nash was teamed with HBK, and people were absolutely going crazy for the Warrior by the time he fought Hogan. In my opinion, the guy on the right simply looks like he doesn't belong. And let's not even get started on Sheamus! Because Jack Swagger didn't have time to establish credibility, and because there was no real journey for fans to connect to, to me he's just a nobody who just happens to have the belt. He, he, he doesn't even look cool on a superficial level. Like, he doesn't look slick like The Rock or Bret Hart. You know, like, like J-Body says, he, he has that horse face. You know, like, like, kind of like Madison Rain. Maybe they should get married, have some little ponies. But he shouldn't be world champion. At least not before he's had time to connect with the fans with an established personality. Lack of personality is all over wrestling these days, not just in the WWE. You want to know the truth? The truth is, I don't even like Kurt Angle that much anymore, and he's one of my favorite wrestlers. Remember when Kurt Angle was awesome? Remember the three eyes, playing the guitar, hitting on Stephanie McMahon, giving Stone Cold the little medal, driving around in the milk truck, going around college campuses promoting abstinence? Remember he'd walk up to college students and be like, if you want to suck on something, suck on this, and he'd give them lollipops? That's Kurt Angle! By the time he transferred to ECW, they changed him into this wrestling machine, which was not as good but still cool, but now we don't even have that anymore. These days he just walks out in a suit and talks about how he respects AJ Styles and he's going to get Mr. Anderson for what he said, blah blah boring. That's not Kurt Angle. Kurt Angle hops around on one foot, he goes whoo, and walks around backstage with Bob Backlund. So to be perfectly honest, personality-wise, I don't even like Kurt Angle that much anymore. Personality-wise, he might as well just go stand next to Jack Swagger and Rudy Poudreau. What happened to personalities in wrestling? Almost everybody is boring. Jeff Hardy tries to make himself look all cool, but the second he gets on the mic, he sounds just like everybody else. The only pretty interesting personalities these days are D'Angelo De Niro, Ric Flair in the wheelchair, and maybe CM Punk. How come almost nobody has interesting personalities anymore? Don't give me that, Ms. Crap! Where are the follow-ups to Flair, Savage, Rude, Perfect, Roberts, Piper? What happened? 